where's the markets going? Let's talk to Tom Farley, our friend, of course, on the floor, uh, president of the New York Stock Exchange. They all want to know, is the rally going to continue, Tom? What are you telling them? Bob, I enjoy meeting with you on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, but I, I, could, yeah, get used, I could get used yeah. to this. Uh, the rally is real. It's not just an American story. It's a global story. You look at the MS MSCI World Index. It's at all-time highs. Back here in the States, nearly everything is going well with the economy. Asset prices, all-time highs. Interest rates, low and stable. Volatility, low and stable. Number of jobs going up. Investor confidence going up. So it feels really good right now. Now, you're going to Davos, and you're going to, you know, you think you just sit around and have fancy dinners. 45 meetings with uh, 45 CEOs, because that's what you're going to primarily be doing. What are you going to tell them, and what is on their list of things that are worrying them? For me personally, it sounds a lot more grand and leisurely than it actually is. I, uh, for the most part, sit in meeting rooms, meeting with global leaders uh, from the New York Stock Exchange. About a quarter of all of our listed companies are global, non-U.S., so it's the most efficient opportunity to meet with them. I think in terms of what the topics will be this year, number one, it'll be the kind of booming economy and asset prices all around the world, but on the uh, in the conversation of what could derail that, it'll be mostly about trade. What could go wrong with trade? Not just Brexit, but what could go wrong between the U.S. and China, or the U.S. and uh, other countries in North America, and what's to come in the year or two ahead? Yeah, I think the important thing is if you think about what derails the rally, down here we've talked about the recession possibilities, we've talked about some other issues, uh, we've talked about uh, prospects of war, we've talked about the Fed raising rates, but a trade war potentially could derail things. Yeah, and there's been more and more bluster from global leaders all over the, all over the world about revising trade deals, about actually reducing the amount of global trade. And if you look at the free enterprise system of, of which we're a part, global trade has been the primary reason why poverty's down by 80% during my lifetime. It's the primary reason why the quality of life has improved for so many people all around the world. I think the important thing is from here, Everybody wants to know about Bitcoin. I know. Go ahead. Roll your eyes. We've talked about this before. But the interest level is off the charts. We saw the SEC come out last week and essentially say the barrier to entry to a Bitcoin ETF is really, really high. Essentially, no. If, do you see... Well, you keep laughing. Why? Where do you see this going? Come on. You know the interest I'm only smiling because every interview I do now, I, I get multiple questions about Bitcoin. I'm sitting here at an ETF conference, an industry that wasn't even born when I went into college. And we've had a trillion dollars of assets move into ETFs this year. And yet I've gotten asked more about Bitcoin I, I here at this ETF your conference. On this. And, I mean, the ETF industry is as healthy as it's ever been. It's helping retail investors get access to asset classes they didn't previously have. But let me answer the Bitcoin question. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency still are missing two key elements. Utility, the ability to use them regularly, and institutional involvement. So we have been working quietly for a long, long time trying to help that chicken and egg problem. How do you encourage institutional involvement? How do you improve utility? This may surprise you, Bob, and your viewers. We're now in our fourth year of our partnership and investment with Coinbase. When we invested, nobody even knew what Coinbase was because we wanted to be early. We wanted to understand where blockchain and cryptocurrency was going to head, and we've been working quietly on those two So two what key have elements. you learned? Four years of having Coinbase whisper in your ear every day. That's a very valuable asset, I agree. What have you learned? We need to improve utility. I mean, not to, I'll just reiterate what I just said. You need to improve utility. There really isn't much you can do with Bitcoin today. There are some companies who have come out and said, hey, I'll accept Bitcoin for payment. By and large, no one is using it. It's a store of value, and it's, a, uh, 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 it's an opportunity to speculate. What we need to see is more ability to be able to use Bitcoin to pay for your babysitting service, to pay for goods and services. It doesn't exist certainly today. can't do that right now. It's, certainly not a, a, it's become more of a store of value than anything else. My colleague, Melissa, has a question for you. Melissa, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Tom. So, so my question is, why then would you file with the SEC to list two pro shares Bitcoin ETS, if you think that they're missing some critical <laughs> elements that would make it a decent investor for the retail and to the average retail investor out there. Th thanks for asking that, Michelle, because that actually was a little bit of a misunderstanding in, in the press from a couple weeks ago. We did not file to list those ETFs. We work with literally hundreds of ETF, ETF issuers. We had 56 ETF issuers last year issue ETFs. Uh, and we had an issuer this year file to list Bitcoin ETFs. That was not a New York Stock Exchange listed ETF. So, uh, pardon me, that was not a New York Stock Exchange ETF. Let me just finish because right here uh, on the ETF question, we've seen all sorts of numbers for the ETF business growing. $480 billion in inflows. We've got $3.5 trillion. Is there anything that can stop this juggernaut? There are people who say indexing is way too big now. 
Is it too big? And what worries you about ETFs right I, now? I, I'm not a prognosticator, but I don't see a reason why this trend is going to stop. ETFs continue to get lower cost, more efficient to the end investor. The end investor continues to become more comfortable with holding ETFs in their portfolio. And so there's both the benefit and the comfort, and we continue to see innovation. We had an ETF launch last week, Block, that already has $100 million of assets under management. It's, it's trading a Bitcoin. A million shares. It's Bitcoin related, uh, blockchain related. They're investing in companies that are committed to uh, investing in the blockchain. For example, yeah. IBM and, and, yeah. and Citi, just for, for example. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.